Thank you. Uh, I don't know how much time I have, but uh, you know, just uh, 10 minutes, total 10 minutes, uh, including question. It's okay. I will make whatever is possible. Yeah, that seems uh, reasonable. Okay, I don't. Uh, so, um, original title you already read, and uh, I thought I would just throw some ideas towards how um, we have heard a lot of talks. Mount Mo 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 is not a static theory, in the sense that it has a, a core, a, a root of a scale, a knot, etc. But what bells and whistles, what scalar field, what dependency? actually goes in, what is the, do we have any physical priority as to what, uh, what is allowed, what is not allowed? Uh, you, my, that, uh, my point at the end is, all the wide binary tests and galaxy cluster tests are just telling us MOM perhaps is a theory richer than it was when it was invented, say, wouldn't it be nice if acceleration was something special? Which is like, a, why acceleration, not the, accelerate, not the gradient of the potential square, is a gradient of potential. So, there are lots of things, and uh, so there are lots of ideas, generalized among the G, and uh, uh, as a direction. Okay, Zach? Okay, I think this is perhaps the most important um, picture uh, I want you to have, and uh, I'm uh, just illustrating this in detail later on. Right, in 2006, we had this Mount workshop in Edinburgh, <coughs> you know, only a few people may be able to understand what Mount does, uh, at least the Q Mount, the, the, sorry, the Aqua Mount, and lots of people have uh, different ideas. Uh, so, so it was understood, uh, like uh, pretty much everybody understood that, uh, we, uh, that especially Luke uh, did uh, uh, explicit models with this picture that uh, you know galaxy is very much like okay is it okay to press here okay galaxy is very much like a charge and polarizing a media and the media adds a little polarization this polarization would track the direction of the ether may not be exactly spherical but there's a response. This response is by this dielectrical polarization coefficient uh, in magnetic, you would say magnetic sus susceptibility, uh, but there are no such thing as magnetic monopole, so that analogy is a little bit harder to go with, so I go with the electric. So the principle is it. Okay, we know that in magnetic, that this, this coefficient <coughs> can depend on field strengths, the magnetic media, the separate, you can't depend on, it's quite common. So, uh, so maybe gravity also does something like this, right? But it's also very common in nature that uh, the electric, such as the electric of water, depends on the, well, uh, the electric for air, depends on the air density. That's <coughs> what happens with turbulence, the C effect. Yes, uh, all astronomers understand that. And uh, so, so why not second derivative of the potential? Yes? Is there, at the time when Newton wrote down this formula, it's Occam's razor, you know. If I can get by with one derivative, I'm not going to bother with two derivatives to turn people off. Also, I don't have a priori how to write that function. I don't even have a very good guide. So, make it minimal. Okay? Keep it up. So at least they have to do this to do galaxies. But does it depend on a little bit on potential? Well, everything pretty much in the in the neighborhood, pretty much shallow potentials. You know, there was no cluster data. Why introducing that? Seems seems counterproductive for people who want to work on it. But a theory, how dependence is not determined by your likely. Okay? It's determined by the fundamental of it. Okay? It may have an infinite number of dependencies, if you like, or it just stops and there's a priority, there's a funny combination. But anyway, 
uh, the, the equation that we know is this dielectric like or susceptibility like equation. Uh, this field, which is an, you can see a Newtonian field. No, sorry, this is the actual field, and uh, uh, that's the polarization part, that's the susceptibility. Okay, this is the really, so this is not going to depend on potential, gradient of potential, or some second derivative of the potential. But which one should the priority? At the time of bound, we just don't know. And uh, it would be foolish to introduce this at the very beginning. But there is no, there is no, until bound is fully understood, and we cannot be exclude that bound will be just like normal dielectric, depends on density, this will be called the G bound class, and depending on the potential, this will be the E bound class, so that the galaxy clusters have a, a larger effective A0. It's, it is, there's still a constant A0, but its position in the equation is boosted. This position in the equation is suppressed by density. Okay? So you can create different external field effect as you need. Now I won't have talk about this, just to say the Mount has a few directions on small scale, galaxy scale, galaxy cluster scale, local group scale. We can we can explore these and we can explore them in small scale, like the solar solar system, looking at the saddle point. This work has been done here in Sanders and uh, uh, also looking at Proxima, or our neighbor, which is a Y binary, uh, well, it's, well, it's a Y binary uh, around uh, a double. But anyway, so I think I just don't have time to talk about this. This is the basic amount. You see, when we invent it, look, there, we have to do this, G and G, there. Now, what is this dependency? Uh, it would be silly to introduce other quantities at the time. You know, if you introduce a potential here, or protect a gradient of this, I mean, why? why? Why introducing that? It's easier if you would just do this. So it's purely, mathematically, more appealing. Or, or it just looks nicer, but it doesn't speak the physics. All right. Uh, I'm trying to go to the next slide. Why is it stuck? Okay. It's, it's oh, it did. Oh, it's just here it's stuck. Okay. It did go next slide, right? Yes. Okay. Anyway. So this is uh, the as in Y binary signal we have just been discussing. Engineer has uh, <coughs> basically he was hired here to, to, to do this test. So he spends, you know, lots of brain cells trying to do this, free from all kinds of systematics and. Uh, considering all possibilities in a statistical way and uh, try to minimize the error in, um, instead of amplifying them by um, invoking say, One of the key important things here, uh, I don't have a slide, is pers perspective effect. It, this happens when binaries are widely separated in the sky and when they are closer by or widely separated uh, it's no longer true. The systematic, the systematic of the system, uh, systematic of the very center of the uh, system affects uh, the creates artificial velocities. Now, okay, uh, this is basically for in general. Uh, so this is a work we've done here to to show Proxima's uh, orbit, which is of y binary. Proxima orbit, this is the very center. So you see the precession, and this is very much the, what we heard from the, yeah, uh, what we heard in the previous talk about uh, planet X, okay? So this type of things happens with uh, Proxima, with uh, Y binary in general, every Y binary according to the external field, etc., should do this. And it, in fact, even the orbit is doesn't keep the same eccentricity, it dances around in a range, and but most likely we are at the most eccentric point. That is not it's not like a we it's not like we, it has to be at the apple center now, but it's, it's, it is it's, this is more eccentric orbit, this is more circular. Look, this is seven and seven. Okay, so throughout the galaxy history, it's easier to find white binaries with higher eccentricity than lower eccentricity. 
uh, well, there's a, there's a bias. How strong is that is uh, is matter? Uh, but I think uh, modelers, uh, sorry, modelers of uh, external field effect ought to be aware of such a possible bias. Don't have time. Don't have time. And uh, in Mount, so I said Mount can generalize in three, two or three directions, an infinite number of directions. Okay. But let's just make simple. Same simple. The highest order is. It should depend on the potential or the depth of the potential, or the escape speed of the system. Okay. Uh, uh, here, when I see capital A, I don't mean I'm changing A naught. I'm just saying the effective position, the effective A zero that you put in the aqua or Q mount is boosted by how much? Well, uh, here is example. Uh, it's it's one here. Basically, it's uh, A zero inside in typical galaxies where the where the speed of escape is quite low, it is pretty much the same number, small variations. But then when you reach galaxy cluster scale like here, then its number goes up. So this is one example. Mm -hmm. This is another model proposed by Beckenstein himself uh, before he passed away. Uh, that this thing just rise up exponentially. And uh, so it's just said to say you can make covariant versions of this. That's not the, the truth. But which one is more important? Should we do it? You know, how much should we do this? No reason. No, no. Astronomers need to tell theorists how to do. Or theorists has to come up with an even higher insight what how to do. We are, we are just in between stage. So in galaxy clusters, you can have a more function like that. In galaxies, you can have a more function like that. Is that I mean, Treating things freely? No. I'm still following one rule. Okay. And uh, this, the second flavor of uh, models uh, is depending on density. This sort of idea has already been discussed in a very early paper by Putin Kong 2008. It's basically, this is the bond potential. Yes? And, uh, but the actual potential, okay, so for example, you can add in a Adding the something, the strength depends on the depth of the potential. Is that a good idea to solve galaxy cluster problem? Maybe. Uh, they, they, they conclude not, not so good, but we found it that it works. So they said another way. Perhaps we can depend on, have it depend on the amount of boost on the amount of suppression, depends on what kind of, I mean, a dense region or low dense region. For example, cluster generally less dense the interstellar medium there compared to a galaxy. Now, this is a, how Mount of DC, I wish the new room has presented the generalized version the very first time with Beckenstein. And uh, Beckenstein 1984, they certainly know how to do it. They can certainly, they can certainly by the Lagrangian, conserving energy. Making the Q, uh, making the quasi-linear, they, they could in principle do all that. Okay, but it's just that you know why bother with those? Why well, you can do just the classical? Okay, this is but but we are working with the latest uh, paper. I illustrated. Uh, the, it would be nicer if we consider models where apart from the normal motion kinetic potential uh, uh, part, this is the Q mount effect. And this thing depends on the potential. Potential is one derivative, which will be normal. This is what we normally think. Second derivative, you know, why? Why do we need that? Or n derivative. And it's not difficult to work out the corresponding Poisson equation, just more terms. The punchline is now your effective A0 is now a function of something. In here, we are going to emphasize. Let's consider density. Sorry, consider systems where there are high steep second derivatives. For example, near a binary, near a wide binary, the potential suddenly got a lot deeper. So it may be suppressed. Okay? Uh, whereas you know, globally, between, between stars, it's not so suppressed. You can have scales to do this. And I think I already said that in my beginning slide. So this, this is, of course, not the only way to do things. Uh, but uh, but the, uh, it's all in the details. How you test these things, I should finish this point. 
Uh, how you guys this thing? For example, if you want things to depend on second derivative of the field, then things like rho radius will change from the mount prediction. This is my prediction for mount rho radius. Uh, if you have something, he something here, what is the rho radius here? It's really just the mass ratio of the two, uh, 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 typically, yeah, and uh, it will be like that. But now if you have some density dependence, you have to be more careful. The size of this rho radius may shrink. This is a uh, work 2006, at the time when Beckenstein first made career models. I realized Mount is not the ultimate form. When it was written down as just a function of some gradient of potential, uh, uh, why not the potential themselves? Because it was just, a, but all such class of theory can work out the property. Um, I don't know if I'm not allowed to go very very quickly. Just the slides and uh, just 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 the slides, not really saying very much. Okay, this is a uh, just to say. Okay, for example, the the. Uh, the, 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 uh, a typical how uh, this uh, let's consider my E mom. Uh, this is a uh, with Bernard and uh, PRE, uh, PRF. Uh, 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 so the potential, this value is no longer a constant. It is it is smallest value is at a naught. This is this is very close to here. When the potential depth of a galaxy is really really small. But inside a cluster, such as a bullet cluster, etc., this number can go as to as high as 100 in some places, but low in some other places. It's not uh, freely tweaking, but you do have a function as a whole, and you try to keep this function the same in all galaxies. You can do this in QMOM if you like, and you can, and in fact, you can sometimes find the peaks, create the peaks in between two mass points, a little bit like the bullet cluster lens, but it's, uh, it's not. Uh, exactly that. Uh, just to say there has the potential to do this type of things. But what generally it, this type of model addresses is what the Sanders presented in, uh, you know, in, the, uh, <coughs> in the 90s. Uh, and it was realized that galaxy clusters were always, in the standard way of mom, it's always factor of 10 off. Uh, it's not always factor of 10 off, but it's the order of factor of 10 off. Okay, so it's something very. Now, if you do this idea of just letting the vary according to say the function I just gave you, you know, detail, you can look at the paper, and this is what happens to a predicted dark matter. This is the NFW, one of them is the, uh, I think the red is the NFW line, the green is the, the mom predicted, the boosted mom predicted line for galaxy clusters. You don't have you don't have hundred percent good fit, but certainly you don't have a problem at the factor of two level in fitting most clusters, and this is uh, in fact very consistent with uh, uh, previous uh, speech by Tian and uh, uh, and uh, uh, Chen. Okay, and uh, in fact summary, and uh, I say E mount boosts in B potential. G mount, such as what uh, Milgram wrote down there already, but this property need to work out explicitly. Uh, generally, quenches mount at high density, for example, near a star. So these two together means we can do galaxy clusters as well as binaries, even if we don't detect an external field effect, we will not be too, we won't be too bad, but it would be nice if we get a signal so we know which way to go. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Hi, Wang Jing. Um, I, I just have a comment. Uh, you mentioned the perspective effect. Uh, it, uh, that, uh, that affects. Uh, uh, I gives you unfortunately a, I don't have the slide. No, no, I, I, I know it very well. Uh, it, it gives you an extra uh, artificial velocity due to the fact that things are approaching or receding, and if it's very wide and very close. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Q does not include it. I do include it. Q did not include it. No, I did include it. You included. Yes, I included okay. it. So and the truth is somewhere in between. Am I correct? Sorry. The truth might be somewhere in between. The, no. the, the ultimate prediction. 
Well, no, 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 I mean, the factor compared with the factor. Well, yeah, I, I just want to mention that I, I checked, for example, that the magnitude of this effect is and how important it is. Yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, for example, you go all the way up to 30 kilo AU, it's going to be more important. It, That's right. It's more important, it's all important for very, very wide and very close binaries. Yeah. So, uh, for example, uh, Proximity effect. Exactly. Let's, let's exactly. say that the proximity. So when you're driving on the highway and you see the posts, uh, posts that seem to move, uh, approach to each other when, yeah. when they're going away or whatever the, the sign post. But no, I mean, ju just uh, the, the comment I want to make is that um, in the region where we start seeing uh, a deviation from Newton, this is very, this is a very small effect. No? We see, we, we begin to see this deviation from Newton at two kilo AU. I understand that 30 kilo AU is going to be very important, but at 2 kilo AU, um, it, within uh, 200 parsecs of the sun or 100 parsecs of the sun, it's a very small effect. I, I, I've, I've, uh, I've checked what happens if I include that, if I uh, don't include it, and uh, certainly the, the conclusion that you find a deviation from Newton it is, is there either way. But, uh, but yes, in, in, in all uh, fairness, you have, to, you have to include it to, to make sure you're doing everything right. But, um, but yeah, the, the only point is that uh, in the small separations uh, below, say, 5 kilo AU, it is not a strong effect. Maybe at 30 kilo AU, but certainly not at 5. I, I agree. I do not think that perspective effects will have been a, a very serious issue. Uh, we do our best to include it, and I, I can that you have done as well, but it should not have made a, a big difference. Uh, especially if the main claim is that there's a signal uh, or departure from Detroit mechanics at 2 kilo AU. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. Uh, uh, my point is, there's only one ultimate rigorous way of doing, uh, 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 interpreting, sorry, handling the data. It is incorrect to subtract one proper motion to the other proper motion directly because it's a spherical coordinate. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. you can never just subtract the two. Yeah. You must bring them together and then right. subtract. Correct. Okay, this is then how much you bring them together depends on how close they are, hence they are angle to us. Okay, but they could both be wide binary, but here the very, very perspective of proximity effect very big. Was up there, very little. Okay. Okay. okay, so we shall answer the last few quotes. So, uh, okay, that factor uh, maybe in matter a little bit, but uh, the, the more important factors are three particles and uh, is your method. And uh, so you are not really justify, you really didn't justify why you choose to use weak data. It's the ratio of the two velocities, and then uh, you didn't justify you uh, you calibrated the multiple detection. So it's like uh, you are ignoring more important factors, and then you are just focused in less important factors. Okay, uh, I, I, I'm not the one who did it. Okay, I checked the engineer's code. Okay, line by line, and I did my job. <laughs> And uh, you know, I gave all the cautions. I believe he 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 wasn't willing to do things very very close. Uh, when even he started with two kKU, so I, I urge him to do even closer uh, binaries. Just make sure nothing interesting going to happen. He's very he's very hundred percent sure nothing interesting going to happen. But let's show let's see it. Okay, if you get a before you have a calibration in the region where nothing happens, uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. We don't have. I don't think we have to worry about seven or eight. Very, very, very. I okay. agree so, with you. And the, the two kilo AU, he thinks it's safe enough. Okay, as that we can do the two kilo, five kilo AU. You see flat. That means it's, it's stable. But let's do it even closer. Just to be big, to be hundred percent sure. Yeah. But he said, no, the data is too big. Why do we bother? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a matter of uh, doing it Okay, so thank you very much for the live